Welcome to the talk show of William Engelis in Stratestate. Today here we are at Colombo Hilton Residences to talk about corporate social responsibility and travel with purpose at Hilton. I have eminent personality, Linda Gibbing, the general manager of Hilton Colombo Residences and she'll be talking about corporate social responsibility at Hilton and also travel with purpose at Hilton. Hi Linda. Hey Kasun. How are you? I'm good and you? <laughs> So, uh, interestingly, today we are going to talk about uh, corporate social responsibility that Hilton is doing mm -hmm. in Sri Lanka, well as in Southeast Asia, because you are the champion for that. Yeah. Because we commonly share something, there is agreement yes. in uh, SDGs. Let's start our, from there. Our commitments. Our commitments. Yeah. <laughs> Let's start from there. All what right. initiative that you all have done uh, in Hilton? Yeah. Um, well, so Hilton uh, is committed to the UN Sustainable Development Goals, indeed, the SDGs that you uh, just referred to, um, where a few that we believe as a company can actually be impacted through our operation and our organization. And so what I do um, is to help hotels kind of translate that into what th does that mean in the operation uh, on a daily basis, because we feel that uh, your responsibility uh, because which is very good thing, but in yeah. the world or everywhere we see at the top level only people are talking about uh, sustainable development goals or yeah. corporate social responsibility. Now we are going into the operation level, which means that gives a better impact. So we'll try, yeah. yeah, yeah. How do you translate those yeah. goals into yeah. something actually actionable yeah. on on operational level, right? Um, but there's much that can be done there. Um, and and um, and it also depends a little bit on the country. So I've been in Asia for about 10 years now, um, and Sri Lanka is the third country within Asia. Um, and you also see that the priorities and the problems per country are a little bit different. So it's also important to have that translation done in such a way that it's most relevant to the community that that hotel operates in. Correct. It's very different also for a resort with an ocean front. They're immediately confronted with any damage that gets done to the ocean on a daily basis. In that is their community, correct? Right, yeah. um, which might be very different from a hotel in the city that that, that experiences a different type of, of challenges. Yeah. Now, Sri Lanka as a country, now they have appointed a parliamentary committee for SDGs because we are heading for the decade for SDGs. Yes, uh, one year is already gone. The second year we are in in the in the decade of uh, sustainable development goals. Also, the Paris Agreement, yeah. right? That those are those are key words in the world. And President Biden, when when he came to the power, first thing what he did was uh, signing the Paris Agreement. Yeah. Right? Those are very good things. Now, uh, in um, in an organization like Hilton, what yeah. are the SDGs that you are supporting? Um, so overall, we could say that that we're committed to doubling our investment in in social impact, and we want to cut our environmental a footprint in half. Um, so there's kind of two, there's the social element and there's the footprint element, sustainability. So um, there is, well, let me see, two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven uh, SDGs that have been specifically yeah, yeah. Um, defined um, and translated in what that means for our company. So uh, I, can, I can give an example. Um, quality education, um, decent work and economic growth and responsible consumption and production means for us that we want to create opportunities by providing skills and employment to the local community. Um, so investing also in innovative local solutions um, and, and deploying our commercial engine for our whole economy, our whole community to grow. Um, so for example, recently, uh, how does that translate on operational level? Um, we've done efforts in partnership with the Deaf and Blind School, okay. where um, we have actually provided training uh -huh. uh, in uh, cooking or pastry skills, actually. Um, we have also, and unfortunately, uh, last year it's been a bit difficult because the school has been closed most of the time. But before that, we actually had planted a vegetable garden, uh -huh. taught them how to grow vegetables and bought them back so that we would have a kind of so a sustainable with product. The blind, blind and deaf school. Yes. Them. Okay. Yes, so it's exactly. a kind of interesting uh, yeah. project. Yeah. And, and from that, actually, almost naturally, um, we also uh, employed a few um, 
team members with hearing disabilities that are in the meantime fully uh, part of our team and uh, the way it should be they're, they're uh, yeah, as I said they're fully part of the team and and we've done some additional efforts so, had, sorry to interrupt yeah if, may, if I may ask uh, yeah. how do you place them in in hotel operation because hotel operation is always people to people uh, always you net have a contact with people and pleasantable personality and yeah. so on and so forth so where do you place them yeah. I'm not discriminating or anything with uh, your experience experience how I, I think everybody brings value. Yeah. Um, there is one gentleman uh, in our pastry kitchen uh -huh. and he's okay. very talented yeah. Yeah. and it's going very, very well. Um, there is a one gentleman in our housekeeping department and he's actually in charge of our water bottling plant, which I'll come to later. Yeah. Um, and uh, the third one is in a guest facing role um, in the recreation area. Um, but he just wears a button and he you know, has a, a little sheet that if people have particular questions that you know, he can point at this button and he can show like you know, people can point, oh, I would like to have a towel or uh, sometimes we just need to do a little bit more effort to make each other understand. But we've never, ever had any negative reaction to any of them. So um, speaking, which again, the, the sustainable development goals and Hilton. Yeah. What is your role in Hilton? Um, so, okay, so I am, uh, our corporate responsibility program is called Travel with Purpose. Yes. And um, I champion the Travel with Purpose program in Southeast Asia. Okay. Uh, so we have, uh, obviously... How many, how many properties? In uh, at the moment, 48 or 49. 48, okay. Yeah, Quite we did big. open a few uh, in the last okay. few months, including, uh, of course, our Double Tree in Vera Villa. Yes. Um, but uh, yeah, just under 50. Yeah. Um, now there is a, somebody that does this in our head office in Singapore full time. Okay. Um, but on a strategic level indeed. And yeah. so, as I said, it's just how does it translate into the operation that, that I'm mostly... So 50 with. properties in how many countries? Uh, good question. <laughs> yeah, good question. Okay. Um, nine. Nine countries. Nine okay. countries, okay. yes. Yes. So quite intense. It well, the, as I said, the, it's a region that is um, has a lot of variances. And the, 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 there's very big differences in uh, in in well SDG challenges, um, culture, language. It's a very varied region, so that makes it even more interesting. Correct. <laughs> Out of all these nine countries, which country you think they are doing best from the because this is not from the, the organization level, it should come from the governmental level, then the mm. organization level. So which country you think the most supportive uh, to SDGs from your experience Ooh. in general? I think all countries are, are, I think there's a general awareness that, that something needs to happen. Um, and most countries are, are um, taking clear steps and have made commitments and, and the government, government is, is committed to making change. And I, I've been really encouraged as well by the um, Sri Lankan government commitment as well yeah. um, that they have made. So on, on some topics, one country, on other and topics, other, other countries. Another, another, another topic. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So all these 11 goals that you have given, you are yeah. given, you are given the the respective uh, prominence or you have selected prominence for uh, no those 11 all translate in in various actions um, on hotel level so you have, for example um, life underwater now, now we live on an island of course we have a lot of hotels close to the sea so life underwater is a, is a very um, kind of hot topic yeah. it's uh, a hot topic it is a hot topic yeah um, and life on the water or life, life below water? Life below, below what does it it's say? 14, life right? below water. Life below water. You're That's right. 14, right? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so that, that, that goes from overfishing, uh, making sure that we're, we're not putting endangered species on the menu. Um, in some countries, working with WWF to uh, ensure that certified sustainable fishing is available. Mm. Um, and, uh, but also making sure that there's no forced labor in the supply chain, yeah. right? Um, 
So there, there's a whole range of, of, of plastics, of course. You know, a big one for life underwater. Pla plastics is just one of the and biggest global and problem. Um, so to, we've, we've tried to reduce single-use plastics as much as we can. Um, and so, for example, ah, that's, that's one thing that I mentioned before, that one, one gentleman with uh, um, hearing disability that uh, heads up our water bottling plant. So it's been a few years already that in order to try and um, reduce single-use uh, plastics, we really wanted to get rid of the water bottles um, because they're actually quite harmful. And uh, so we've invested in a, a water bottling plant. Okay. So we're actually filtering and capping the water ourselves. Uh, obviously, you know, all certified from hygiene um, point of view as well by the relevant authorities. Um, and so everywhere in the hotel, including in the rooms, there's now uh, glass, um, glass, bottle. glass bottles. Yeah. But you have the bottling plant in the hotel. And itself. the bottling plant is here. Yeah. yeah. So which is interesting and we are conserving the environment as well. Yes, but it also makes sense um, financially. The ah. return on investment was um, just over a year. And, and so it, by now, it, you know, that, that has already paid off for itself. And that's one of the SDGs also, clear water. Ex exactly, <laughs> yeah. exactly. Um, I heard that 33% of the global population does not have access to clean drinking water already today. And it will grow to 50% of the population in five years. That is just scaringly close. Right. So, so when, when we were ha having the, the discussion about social corporate responsibility, personally, I really thought it was uh, cleaning a beach, uh, planting yeah. a tree and things like that. But you have gone so far mm. and beyond the norms of uh, what we are doing day to day yeah. basis. Yeah. So what is your opinion towards this whole corporate social uh, responsibility? Well, I think in our case, um, it's very intrinsic. Um, our, our company was founded on the idea that uh, travel can make the world a better place, yeah. right? And so we truly believe that doing right um, to our guests, to our team members, and to our community is just it, it's in our values. It's it's in uh, it's it's intrinsic. Um, we do also, by the way, organize uh, beach cleanups or um, uh, measures to uh, uh, contra deforestation. Yeah. Deforestation is a bit of a, a challenge in Sri Lanka. Yeah. Um, but I think what, but I think the next step that that we try to take is uh, okay. Besides that, also look at more okay from a from a more strategic level. More uh, strategic what can we do? Yeah. Not, not just as a one-off. No. A beach cleanup is one element in our efforts to reduce single-use plastics and support uh, life below water. Yeah. But it's not limited to the beach cleanup. Um, and, and we... Mostly it's like a media show. Well, but you, I mean, are, you, are, you are giving the uh, meaning to it. That's what... My... Yeah, yes. Well, it's definitely uh, not done... Um, yeah, no, for us it's done because it's in our values. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and that doesn't mean that, uh, that sometimes it's good to communicate about it because that increases the general awareness yeah. in the society, which also needs to happen because the, the community needs to start asking. Correct. The community needs to start pushing companies and organizations that can make a difference, right? So that's why I think it's good to communicate about it, but that shouldn't be the only reason, of course. Yeah. So, uh, so if you look at the mandate, but point of view. Mm -hmm. So this is kind of your mandate or responsibility that you want, want to do. Mm -hmm. From the customer's point of view, yeah. travel with purpose. You may meet different type of customers and how do you educate them travel with purpose and uh, social uh, corporate social responsibility and so on and so forth. Yeah. Well, well one good example is um, our new event ready program um, that has morphed older programs older programs into it. So Event Ready was launched as part of Cleans Day, um, which you know, pandemic related, you know, gives guests some guarantees around cleanliness. Yeah. Event Ready is the program that supports that from how to organize safe and secure uh, meetings and how can that be done. Um, so there is an element in terms of distancing and sneeze guards and uh, the, the, the more practical hygiene element. But in that, there's also how do we make our, our meeting responsible? 
So um, we can uh, we propose to organize coffee breaks that are made fully with local ingredients. Okay. No important ingredients, okay. for example. Um, obviously, no plastic, no single-use uh, plastic water bottles. Yeah. And so it's through through. And we could even, sorry, we could even organize for an organization to support one of the social causes that we also support. Yeah. Um, we had a little pop-up shop over Christmas from uh, three of our NGO partners that were selling Christmas card and Christmas ornaments. Um, and and uh, our guests could buy that and, and, and the proceeds would obviously go to those uh, NGO partners. Um, so those are a few examples that how we also communicate this to our guests. Yeah. So what is their feedback? you um i think overall most people appreciate it at the moment um that it, it it warms their heart would they make it is it a key decision making factor um we start slowly start seeing examples of that i would like that to be more okay yeah there's a few examples where we know people have chosen because we could guarantee them that the uh, meeting or the wedding would be zero waste to landfill. Okay. We can actually guarantee that. Um, or uh, no plastics or... So there's a few examples, but I'd like that to be more. I'd like the community to start asking for it a little bit more. Some time back when I was talking to our United Race student coordinator in Sri Lanka, she was talking about the waste and the yeah. debris that how do you manage the, whether we give it to staff member or are we throwing it off or the food waste? Food waste, yeah. yeah. Food waste. So what is, what is the Hilton strategy for that if you can elaborate? So there, um, yeah, there is per country. Um, there is guidelines in terms of hygiene. Obviously, food that has been heated yeah. um, cannot actually given a, be given away for human consumption uh, for hygiene reasons. Hygiene reasons. Yeah. So there is elements that can be done, like uh, bread and, and pastry. Uh -huh. There's a bit more opportunity. Um, there was an organization that was doing that in Colombo, but it kind of uh, uh, didn't come off the ground. So if, if you know somebody that, that can do it for human consumption, yeah. then yeah, we're very uh, happy. Um, we now partner with uh, Bao Bao. They um, uh, provide it for um, stray dog food. Okay, okay. Um, and any other waste that the dogs cannot eat um, goes to uh, farms, okay. where it gets kind of used for so composting and, and animal. recycling. Yeah. Yes, so recycling. there's... No food wastes uh, to landfill. So it's all about your extensive work that you are doing. I want mm. to know your personality and your character, how you Hi. started your uh, career. Yeah. And why you are in um, sustainable development goals or the corporate social responsibility. When I read your personality, you are more into revenue and commercial and yeah. there is a drastic shift here. So. We we'll start from your beginning. Okay. Yeah, I, 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 I've never actually thought about that. I don't know if there's a conflict. This um, is not. No. This is interesting. Yes, I, I think it's actually very complementary. Yeah. Uh, the commercial uh, background with the. Um, but usually passion. people won't go to these areas, you know. So right. people don't like to perceive their career in uh, corporate social responsibility or. or uh, SDGs or whatever in, right. in that sense because you have taken a drastic step in terms of that. Yes, but obviously I, I'm, I'm still general manager okay. as well, yeah. right? Um, so this is just, this is something I am passionate about and I also feel, um, so I mentioned earlier that it needs to be throughout the operation. Corporate responsibility is not a one-off thing here or there. It needs to be everywhere and everybody needs to be understanding of what that can mean for, what that means for their role. Um, but indeed, yes, I, I started off my career, um, it's about 20 years ago, actually, with Hilton, um, as I uh, graduated with a bachelor um, on, in hotel management in the Netherlands, which is my home country, and started uh, for the Hilton on Amsterdam Airport. Okay. Uh, and kind of moved around different various commercial positions, it was sales conference and event sales, revenue management. Um, the first 
12 years. I, I got the first head of commercial role in uh, the Conrad in Brussels at that time, okay. Belgium. And from there, got the possibility to go to uh, the Conrad in Bangkok, uh, Thailand. So that was the first Asian experience. Um, yeah. And that is a large 10 years ago now. Um, and and uh, yeah, I haven't looked back. So since then, I have had commercial head of commercial roles uh, um, in Kuala Lumpur as well. Yeah. And then I had, and I think that's an interesting part in terms of empowering people uh, and, and creating opportunities as well. When I came to Bangkok in our region, we had no female general manager. Okay. And a lot less hotels as well, right? Just 10 years ago. So you're and the only female? No, at that moment I was still on director's okay. level, okay. right? And then um, I had a very, very, very adventurous general manager. So I had always worked commercial and I said to him, it's like, I'd, I'd like to do something else. I'd like to be out of my comfort zone, but I'm not sure how, which direction shall I go from here? And he said, okay, so why don't you go to operations? You become director of operations and we move the operations director to your you know, commercial head role. And I'm like, <laughs> and I thought operations, like I'd always been so result focused yeah. and, um, driven sales by the driven, whole yeah. sales um, and, and commercial ap approach to our business. Um, but I thought I was really, I was really a bit, you know, edgy. I really wanted to do something else. I thought, okay, why not? And I enjoyed it so much more than I thought because you can still be results focused yeah. in operations as well. Of course, yes. Um, and I enjoyed uh, the, the interaction, different interaction more than I actually anticipated. And through that, then, you know, with both a commercial and an operational position uh, under my belt, um, I became general manager uh, in Malaysia, in, in another hotel in the north of the country, um, a year later, basically. Um, by then we had a few female general managers. And um, by now there is definitely a much bigger balance already in Southeast Asia. There's been a drastic change in the past 10 years. And in Sri Lanka itself, um, we've got four general managers, three hotels operating and one in pre-opening. Um, two male, two female Ooh, yeah, and three it. local, only one foreigner. Because that's something else that yeah. Hilton also supports uh, developing local talent. Mm. So we're very proud of that. So apart from your job role, so always you have been in this uh, sustainability arm, right? You were the head of uh, City Hotels uh, Association for yeah. Corporate Social Responsibility in Colombo, also in Malaysia. So, yeah. how do you balance these? Uh, I don't know. Because probably the outside mindset is different. The organization mindset is different. So, how do you need to bring it to an alignment? What do you mean the outside? No, so let's say uh, if you are running with a couple of other hotels, they don't give you the same prominence as you for the corporate social responsibility. Ah, correct. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, but I feel within Hilton, we've got very good support and also because our, our vice president for Southeast Asia himself is very passionate yeah. about it. Mr. Paul Hutton. Mr. Paul Hutton, yeah. correct. Um, and so having his support, his genuine support, um, obviously makes everybody more passionate, more passionate about it as well, because we just get a lot of information that makes us realize that we need to, we need to action. Yeah. Um, and, and. Um, yes, we've done some actions once again in 2020 that has been a little bit quieter, but in 2019 with the uh, Colombo City Tourist Hotel Association, we've done some actions as well, mostly focused on reducing single use plastics. Okay. Um, and I was encouraged to see that um, already the vast majority of hotels um, that are uh, with the association had already ditched the plastic straws. Okay. Because I feel plastic straws are really not of this time anymore. Like, you know, <laughs> that, that, that cannot, and there was a lot of support of that. But obviously there's always the concerns on, on the cost element, but innovation will provide the answers to that. Uh, so moving forward, again coming to you, yeah. how do you balance your leisure time? Um, do you well, have leisure time, first of all? Yeah, I think yes. Yeah, I do. Uh, I do. Uh, um, and yeah, I'm, I'm married, I have two children. They are uh, 11 and 8. 
And so obviously, are I they like schooling to here? Or? Yes. Uh, okay. Yes. Well, not at the moment. Obviously, no, 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 online no, no, schooling no, no. at the moment. Um, and so I really enjoy spending the time with them. Um, and the fact that I haven't been able to travel abroad for a long time or, or go to my home country or my husband's home country has also allowed more time to explore Sri Lanka. So I've added a few destinations to my list in the periods that we were allowed to travel okay. interregionally, of course. I've definitely uh, taken that opportunity in a, in so a safe way. So you mean to say traveling is one of your hobbies? Well, and with my family. Yeah, with your family, yeah. Not yes. Official Exploring. Well, also, yeah. I also enjoy that, yeah. but um, uh, I haven't done that for a while, so yeah. I've kind of forgotten what it is like. <laughs> <laughs> but traveling with my family and then exploring mm -hmm. Sri Lanka and in, in, in all its diversity, yeah. um, that's just, that's been amazing. Yeah. So that's all, uh, reading? Uh, yes. Uh, uh, reading. While they're talking to you, I think you read a lot. Then oh, yeah? you, you, you have quite, quite extensive knowledge in certain things. Yeah. I, I, don't, um, I don't read quite as much as I would want to. Yeah. Um, but recently I've been reading um, a lot about um, learning to meditate and actually I'm now reading Think Like a Monk from, okay. from Jay Shetty. Spiritual. Yes. Jay Shetty, I, I, I read the same stories. Yeah. Yes. And so much of YouTube. Uh, yeah, no, and I think it's very yeah. relevant yeah. because times are confusing. Yeah, he's right? talking about so much. Uh, how do you look at from a uh, human perspective, also yeah. from the monk perspective? Yes, put together. And, and, and I find I, I find it interesting to uh, to understand like how we can train our mind. And um, there's just so many people that have had losses in one way or another. Um, of, of, of people, of jobs, of money, uh, it creates a lot of anxiety this year, right? Yeah. It, it's a very uncomfortable, well, it was a very uncomfortable year, 2020. And uh, although I think we're on a path of recovery, we're not quite there yet. And, and so um, to, to train your brain on um, how to deal with all that, I think is, is, is really relevant and, and interesting. Yeah. yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> um, so it was very interesting discussion points travel with purpose at hilton has two dimensions one is in environmental impact and social impact we talked a lot about social impact mm. but we need to talk about the environment impact also what you're doing so yeah. why don't we entice us on that yeah i think in, in, on environmental impact i think there are kind of three uh, uh, yeah three pillars um that we should focus on uh, one is uh, energy uh, consumption okay. reduction basically uh, water mm -hmm. reduction um, and waste management um, so we track our progress against kind of science-based targets for for carbon um, also driving water stewardship and re-engineering waste innovation uh, for sustainable operations um, so Hilton has a system where all hotels enter data for the consumption and reduction of, of these three pillars, energy, water, um, and waste. So that already gives um, a measure. Whatever gets measured gets done, right? Okay. Um, in terms of uh, waste, some activities that, that we've done to reduce, as I said, uh, we've got hardly any uh, waste to landfill at the moment. Um, so one activity that also not only not going to landfill, but kind of repurposing uh, items has been uh, Linens for Life in partnership with the um, chemical supplier Diversi. They uh, assist in repurposing linen. So there's an NGO involved. Um, Diversi makes sure that they have the machines and then they can use the linen to make other things and maybe sell it to create a livelihood as well. Right. Um, last year, we've done a lot of that where um, uh, one of our NGO partners has made uh, face masks uh -huh. um, out of uh, repurposed linen yes. um, that they Just could nice, distribute in their community. Uh, yes, 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 yes. Nice, yes, bright were... linen. Yeah. <laughs> Correct. Um, and uh, another one has been uh, uh, Soap for Hope, where um, Rests of soap get uh, re-sanitized re and then uh, through a whole uh, chemical process repurposed into new bars of soap uh, also by uh, an NGO that can then also be used in the community and, and given away for free um, or sold to generate a livelihood for the NGO. Okay. Um, 
which yeah, it's obviously today even more important. It right? is more important. Yeah. Singh now we have come to the end of the program now. Right. Um, I have two questions left. I will mm -hmm. ask direct. So okay. since Billy Mangle, since that slipped is the host for you yes. today, I like to know your impression towards our institute. Couple of our alumni working with you. And yes. Uh, what yes, is your they are. There? Yes, they are. Um, well, I think it's it's really great. Our our industry is um, traditionally. Um, although now we focus very much on domestic tourism and domestic events, but traditionally our industry is of course very international. Um, and it's really important that we understand um, people that come from different backgrounds and that have different interests um, and, and what they are looking for, whether they are our guests or our team members uh, or when we work abroad, uh, our community. And. Um, I, that I think that the international affiliation um, helps any institution and, and William Anglis also um, to kind of keep on developing on that point and, and keep on increasing our understanding and empathy and um, that, that we all need so much nowadays. So that, I think that's, that's a really important uh, point. And uh, yeah, we're obviously very happy with the alumni that, uh, that are with us. Thank you. It's an honor to hear from you. <laughs> Finally. What is your message to the public and to the industry? Um, yeah, my message uh, to the public is I'm actually quite uh, positive about the future. Um, that we've had uh, one of the most disrupting years, um, well, hopefully in our lifetime, uh, last year and then for our industry. And um, as I said, we're, we're on a path um, but we're not out of the wood yet. Um, and, and I think if it has taught us something that is that we need to keep on looking for solutions, we need to keep on innovating, not focus on the problems, but see what, what, what can we do instead of what can we not do. Um, and, and then think of the next steps, always have a plan B, right? And, and to be agile and innovative. And there might actually be, you know, let's keep on looking forward. So I have taken a few notes. You said innovative, hopeful yeah. and be pessimistic. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Having said, uh, we have come to the end of our talk show today. It was a very interesting point. We were talking about uh, corporate social responsibility and uh, SDGs, the Sustainable Development Goals and Sustainable Development Decade and so on and so forth. It was fantastic. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for being with us. Please do not forget to subscribe and put the bell mark. Thank you. We look forward to seeing you in another video.